Jay Glazer joins us on the show today. We are in the midst. What's up, guys? We are in the midst, Jay, of the NFL trading deadline. You know, there was a time. Jerry, Jimmy Johnson always talks about this. There, there was a time nobody traded. And yeah. Then Jimmy came in and people were like, oh, that's kind of crazy. Right. And now, the other day, Dilfer and Peter King said this, you know, these, these new GMs and coaches, they don't mind trades at all. But it's, it's not so much that. It's, there's two things. And you and I talked about in the early, early in the offseason. The Eagles, they were wheeled and dealed all the way, themselves all the way to a Super Bowl last year. But the Khalil Mack trade. That made all the difference in the world How because come? teams all of a sudden started opening up the coffers like they never have for a guy, and it's worked out so well for the Bears. Other teams going, maybe we can we could do something like that also. Like it's you know draft picks used it used to be hard. Like you're right to get a fourth out of somebody, and now the Cowboys say, okay, we'll give a one for Cooper. All right, we're going to go up and give multiple picks. And it's a copycat league. For, yes, for Mac, it absolutely is. And I think that the Khalil Mack trade is really what got teams to. Think a little bit more out of the box. And even so, even after the teams that didn't get Mac, they were still willing to say, hey, we were willing to trade this for Khalil Mack. Let's identify some of those other great player pass rushers and offer a similar deal to some of these other teams. So like a team like the Jets, they went and called about Chandler Jones right after that. You know, why not? They were in it for Khalil Mack. There were, they were, there were three teams who kind of went down the end. It was the, the Bears. The Jets and the 49ers. For Khalil Mack. Yeah, for Khalil Mack. Wow, the got the Niners. In, in it also. Niners are trying hard. Oh my God. They have they already have a pass yeah. rush. <laughs> There's no way, though, that Gruden would let Khalil Mack stand in the bear. No way. <laughs> That's a good point. No possible way. That's and a good point. They thought they were. You know, look, John Lynch is the same guy I was telling you about last year. I came on, right? And I told you guys that he had the chutzpah yeah. to call uh Belichick and say, Would you trade us Tom Brady? And, you know, Belichick's like, What what did you just ask me? He's like, Well, would you trade us Brady? And he's like, you just asked me if I trade you the greatest quarterback of all time. You just asked me if I trade you the best QB who ever lived. And Lynch said, is that a no? But he, he's like, I had to try. Sure. And they eventually got Garoppolo. Right. You got to make the call in life. You got to make the yeah, call in yeah, life. Yeah, to. So it's interesting with, with Levy and Bell. The two teams that I, I felt Chris Ballard with the Colts. I do believe Andrew Luck could use a weapon. And I do think Sam Darnold, they just lost a running back for the year. The Jets and Colts feel like Le'Veon Bell could potentially work. Now, the Steelers wouldn't necessarily want here. wouldn't necessarily want Le'Veon Bell in the AFC. Maybe did you ever buy into these Le'Veon Bell rumors? No. Here's the problem with Le'Veon Bell. I just t- talked to a team yesterday about Le'Veon Bell, who said, "Look, we'd love him, but the problem is, is what we'd have to give up for him, even if." You know, we turn around and have like this wink, wink, nah, nah, okay, we'll get a new contract for next year. What's to say in seven weeks from now, he goes, no, nah, I'm not doing it. So all of a sudden you give up a, a, a pretty big bounty there, um, and he leaves after a year. Look, the the Rams, it happened to walk it with them with Watkins last year. Uh, Seahawks, I think, with uh, Richardson, right? He just won and done. So it's just, you know, they don't want to give up a two or three or, or whatever it is. To for rent a package him. For him. And to rent him for a few weeks, if you don't even know the type of shape that he's in. Even though they know the upside, and even though you could say to the agent, kind of off the record, even though that's tampering, even we know there's no tampering that goes right. on in the NFL. Um, what to, what's to prevent them from changing their mind? So, but, you think- but, but here's the thing, by the way, with Le'Veon Bell, we talked to some Fox about this on Fox NFL Sunday. They finally had talks last week, so he didn't show up. They finally had talks. Steelers did. Uh, Steelers and, and Bell's representatives, but. What's happening now is that they want to put him on a two-week roster exemption list, which they have every right to do, but they don't want to pay him during that time, which they don't have to. They've got to get Le'Veon Bell to agree to that before he even signs his franchise tender. Why would he sign before that? He comes, well, that's why he's not in. But that's what they're talking I'm about I'm a right superstar. Now. Why am I going to do that? Well, because I think they've both dug their heels in. Right now, okay. we're rolling with James Cooper. <laughs> why not? When the, and they save money for every week. They, they get cap credit. Oh, okay. All right, let's talk John Gruden. Mm-hmm. I didn't agree with the Cleo Mack deal, but it's done. Um, the Amari Cooper deal, I thought he got – I'm okay with both. I think he got value, but I think Dallas needs a perimeter player. W- was Amari Cooper shopped around the league? Yeah, we reported that. We were the first one to report okay. on right after your show. Do you not watch Fox and Sunday when Sometimes you're done with work? I do. See, they have, they serve me, bagels. You Harry, Terry, Jimmy, and Stray, and then when I come on, you they turn do. me off. No, they I'm have hurt. bagels and locks in there. They do. And so I eat <laughs> – Sometimes I don't want, I just go have, they, is that it's what the best Glazer's breakfast. On, so now it's the bagel break the, for me. The best food. Is this a Jewish thing? Is that what you're doing to me? No, that, the best food in LA <laughs> is in the avocado room during your show. It is. How about, I brought my kid Sammy the other day to the show and all his friends. 
And I'm like, great, you're going to come out here and watch it live? No. He's like, no, I want to be, eat breakfast with my friends. Oh, it's incredible. They, my kid could care less. I mean, nothing could be watching, food. That they're watching a live TV show. They're watching <laughs> the Bagels and Locks. So who else was but, in the Amari Cooper deal? So, but here, so we reported this two weeks ago that, you know, it wasn't just Mac. They were looking to trade Cooper. They're looking to trade Carl Joseph. Looking to trade basically all their first-round picks for the last couple of years. Um, and at the time, they were talking to teams about a two-plus a player. And the moment – and the way this league works – the moment that somebody like myself or another insider will put a story out like this, teams will call us, not the Raiders, and they'll go, hey, tell us what they're asking for. Tell us, because they don't want to look overly eager to the Raiders. So they're like, well, if we call and find out what they really want, they're going to up the asking price. You'll know what they really want, so we're going to call you first before we go and inquire about them. Or they'll go, hey – why don't you have your guys from the Raiders call us? It's crazy what happens. No, I know. I've been league, with you. Right? Yeah. Teams call you, <laughs> and they're cherry-picking information right. on other teams. And we're, we're, I'm an information broker. We're trading it. You yeah. know, that's, that's the smart thing to do. Um, but once this happened, once – I mean, there were a lot of teams when I put out about Cooper that called and said, how much – I said, it was a two-plus, and then it changed to a one, and I had, I don't know, six, seven teams that said, oh, we give it two for him. We give it two plus. No, I know. I, so I, once I was, that happened, I knew that somebody was going to say, okay, we'll go to a one. Okay, because I heard from somebody I trust in the NFL, an exec said there was a lot of two talk. Yes. And and by the way, I, I said this yesterday. Jimmy, Jerry Jones is life. He borrowed a million dollars from Jimmy Hoffa's Teamster yep. Union. Um, to, and you know why? To, to, to buy Shakey's Pizzas. And what else? He was doing that. He was trying to get Jimmy Hoffa to help him buy the Chargers. Chargers. Yes. Okay, so he took a risk at workout. He fired Tom Landry, hired Jimmy Johnson. Risk worked out. Right. The Cowboys were losing a million a month when he bought them. Risk worked right. out. And by the cost overrun on his new stadium was six hundred million, and it worked out. Right. If you think he's struggling right. with paying Larry Cooper seven percent of cap space, I mean, to me, it was a very Jerry Jones move. His whole life well, has been. He's always done it. He's done it with the Joey Galloways. He's done. That's what he always, does. Yeah. He, uh, Roy, uh, Roy Williams, and people keep asking, "Is this a good trade?" Here's the deal: if he makes six Pro Bowls, yeah. Great, because you're you're trying to pick in the first round, so you get a wide receiver who's going to make six Pro Bowls for you, right? Yeah. Um, the shaky part is, is that they're trading to one for a guy. If he doesn't pan out, he's going to be a free agent. Also, they got to pay him somehow. They got to figure out, or they could let him go in pick. a year and a half. But but after a, you give him a one, like that's hard, right? That's really hard. So, I think you know, I think he has proven enough where yeah, he is a. He can be a bona fide weapon in this league. We've seen the results. On the other end of it, for the Raiders, it's a great trade if they get a guy that's better than Cooper. If they don't, then it's not a great trade. And just based on you know Gruden's track record with with draft picks, he's been okay. He's it, been a little less than. He's okay. He's had some whiffs. He's he's been a little less than okay. Yeah. Do you like Gruden he's, personally? Yeah. Yeah, I, I got nothing. I yeah, yeah. He's he's um. He's interesting, man. He's a he's kind of he's a TV figure more <laughs> yes. than anything, you know. I, yes. I wouldn't say I know he likes to say he's a grunt and how much, but look, some of the stuff he's doing, I don't get. Like you go and you trade Khalil Mack because he says he doesn't want to play, and he's like, "Oh, he wouldn't play here." That's like your kid telling you, "Don't ever talk to me again," and you take him seriously. Like you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> just because he says he doesn't want to play there for you. Doesn't mean look what just happened this week with, with Patrick Peterson, right? The other day he's like, I don't want to I want to get traded. And they're like, no, okay, that's it. And then he goes and complains about not having a pass rusher. That's my thing. Like, man, you gotta ride and die with your decisions. Don't come out there and, no, and as, as Joy like, says, you don't have to say everything you think out loud. No, absolutely not. Could you imagine? By the way, who did, did we do this game with you once before? Yes, we did. Okay. It was with the honey badger last time. Yeah, okay. Here, got cut. Do we have a, do we have a Jay Glazer of the uh, breaking looking, news? Okay, who just texted hold on, you? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm kind of I don't know what's all the way down here. Uh, Trading mm, deadline. It's coming up. Uh, no, we're good. We're good for right now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you interviewed, uh, you went um, Thielen, Adam Thielen, yeah. who is one of the great stories in NFL history. Yeah. But you also have a serious note, Everson Griffin, who's yeah. a terrific player. There was some, can I say mental illness? Is yeah, that mental fair? health. Mental okay, health, mental yeah. health issue. Have you talked to him? No, I haven't talked to him, but here's the deal. You know, we have our, my foundation here, MVP, Emerging yes. Vets and Players. Yes. We're taking combat vets and former pro athletes. We're merging them together. And you know, we train for a little bit, but afterwards we sit and we, 
we have this huddle, we call it. We talk about mental health issues. Yeah. We talk about why this 22 vets a day who kill themselves. It's not okay yeah. to put a revolver in your mouth, whether right. you're a football player, whether you're a vet, whether you're anybody else. And it's almost like, well, other people are doing it, so we should do it. It's, that's an issue. It's okay to be messed up. Like, I'm really messed up. You guys know me. I'm out of my mind. Yeah. But I'm good with my messed upness. Okay. I'm going to use it to help others. So we're having an MVP session a few weeks ago. And one of our, our veterans kind of, we go around, whatever's going on in your life, we talk about it. Because that's the circle right there. We all get each other, whether you're fighters, football players, war fighters, whatever it is. We get each other. No one's questioning our manhood or, or womanhood. And so we bring everything up. We cry at each other, everything. And a guy, veteran says, hey, um, I want to say something. There was a player this week that just went off the reservation, is what he said. Yeah. And he said, it's on us. It's on our group to really help educate the rest of the world about mental health, that it's not... It doesn't have to be a, right. a, a life killer. It doesn't have to be your game changer. It's something you could use to actually empower yourself, to use to help other people. But right. it's on our group. It's on this circle to educate to the rest of the world because they don't know yet really how to handle mental yeah. health. In the back of the room, a hand raises, and a man steps up, and he says, guys, I'm here as a guest today. My name is Rick Spielman. I'm the general manager of the Minnesota Vikings. I happen to be here because we're playing the Rams tomorrow night. Yeah. I know Jay. And that player you're talking about is my player, Everson Griffin. And you're right. We don't know how to handle these. Yeah. So we thank you guys for your help. I'd love to sit and talk to you guys more it's a real thing. about how to handle this. Oh, it really is, man. It, it really is. No, these are real struggles that are happening everywhere in America. It, and- it's okay. Listen, we all got issues. You, real life is not what happens on Instagram. That's what we're all trying to put out there, like our lives are so rosy. That's not really what's happening out there. Oh, by, by the way, I want another story. So yeah. you, you live in Los Angeles. Jared Goff is the star quarterback for the Rams in L.A., <laughs> and you don't see him. Right. He's literally invisible. Right. Andrew Whitworth, one of the all-time yeah. great guys in the league, is his left tackle. Right. And he's a funny guy. Yeah. Like, he's a talker. We've, we've trained Whit for – So I, uh, I get to wrestle with this guy. Could you imagine that? Six, seven. He looks the same – he looks just like me. Except a except foot and a half taller. 80 times bigger. Like, like he ate 90 Jay Glazers. So Goff and Whitworth have a yeah. relationship. Yeah. How did so, it start? So, well, and that's what's so great about that, that team is that team chemistry. I, yeah, I got a great story here. Um, a couple weeks ago. So when, they, when the Whitworths first moved here, Melissa and Andrew, uh, they, they had, their son Michael had a goldfish. And his goldfish suddenly died. And he was like, oh, my God. It's like he came with the, you know, with the move. So Jared Goff finds out. He says, wait, his, his goldfish died? Oh, I'm going to do something about this. So he goes and he picks Whitworth's little kid up from school. Could you imagine you're sitting there and Jared Goff comes and picks you up from school? He picks him up from school to go buy him a new fish. And then they go, they get a new fish. They come back on. There he is. Whitworth comes in the house and he's like, all of a sudden he sees this 25-gallon fish tank in his house. He's like, what are you doing here? He's like, you didn't get your kid a fish. I'm getting your kid a fish. And he's like, really? He goes, yeah, he named him Goffy and Gurley. No witty. Sorry. So That's great. <laughs> it's great. But that's the relationship. That this team has the great teams, they have those relationships. Let they have you, that family bond. Goff is incredible. Yeah. We live in Los Angeles. He is the star quarterback yeah. on an offensive-minded team in the entertainment capital of the world. He is invisible. Yeah. Like I, I see, he's that, always home playing Fortnite. Is he? <laughs> he is so into the team yeah. and the fabric of it. Uh, there's no yeah. nonsense. His dad was, by the way, a major league baseball player. Yep. So he understands the life. I mean, you can sometimes you meet people or you know, and you're like, oh, they had good parents. Yeah. You look at Goff. He is so rock solid as a kid. But you say that too. You have good parents. Whitworth is the parent of that team. Is he? Yeah, that's what he is. Yeah. Absolutely. Whit- him and McVeigh are perfect for each other. They're the. They're kind of like the parents. I don't know who the wife and the husband is, yeah. but they're the parents of the team. Yeah. No, he's, he's, I, we had him on the couch last year. He, Dave, get him again. He was one of the all time great wow. guests. Jay Glazer, great seeing you. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks. Enjoy the news. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.